Hello, everybody. Welcome into Sports by GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Jeremy Lapidus. Today, we have a lot to talk about, including the Pistons firing head coach, Monty Williams, just one year after signing him to a six-year uh, massive contract. There's still $65 million remaining on his contract. He is officially fired after what was a an awful year, historically bad year, uh, almost broke the records for losses in a row. We'll talk a little bit about his season, why this is a good thing for the Pistons, why this might not be a good thing for the Pistons, and everything surrounding there. We're also going to talk a lot about hockey today in segments two and three. We're going to break down game five of the Stanley Cup Finals in segment two, everything that happened to force that game six. And then in segment three, we're going to talk about Connor McDavid more specifically, and a question of whether or not he deserves to win the playoff MVP trip trophy regardless of who wins the Stanley Cup, whether or not the Oilers do pull out the reverse sweep. Uh, then we're going to end our show talking a little bit about basketball, uh, baseball and football. Willie Mays, the legendary MLB player, legendary career. Uh, we're going to talk about him. Unfortunately, he passed away last night at the age of 93. We're going to talk about the impact he left in the world of baseball, his legacy on today's game, and how incredible he was at baseball. And then we're going to finish off our show talking a little bit about football as the Vikings have made a quarterback decision between Sam Darnold and and J.J. McCarthy. We're going to talk about whether or not that was the right decision, why they made it now, and what they are saying in camp. But we are going to start off in basketball, and before we get into that, we are, remember that if you would like to be an even bigger part of the show than you already are, all you need to do is go to gsmcpodcast.net. Leave a tip or donation with a message in it. That message should pop up on the bottom of the screen for you, me, and everybody else around the world to see. If you do have a burning question about sports, anything at all you would like to add, ask. Go ahead and throw that in the comments. I will get to it as soon as I possibly can. I appreciate all of you guys for sticking around and talking some sports with me here on a beautiful uh, Wednesday. Uh, June 19th. Uh, but like I said, we have a lot to talk about. So we're going to kick off our show today in the NBA. Monty Williams fired from his position as head coach of the Pistons. He was with the Suns before getting fired two seasons ago. That's now two years in a row that he has been fired. So it's a good streak that he's on. Uh, they, he was, his original plan was to stay uh, was to take a break from coaching for at least a year, but the 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 Detroit Pistons were able to lure him out of that plan by giving him a huge contract, a six-year, seventy-eight million dollar deal, uh, to you know a huge, huge money contract for coaches. Excuse me, a uh, huge money deal for coaches. There's still sixty-five million dollars left on his deal, so he is sitting back, sitting pretty, regardless of what happened. But it was a hugely disappointing season. Monty Williams comes in after winning Coach of the Year just a couple seasons ago when he turned that Suns program around, and immediately it's it's clear how outmatched he was. He makes a whole bunch of not great decisions. He's really, really pushing Killian Hayes on everybody in that Pistons organization, wants to play him more than a lot of the young rookies that they're trying to develop. Cade Cunningham, Jaden Ivey, and it just wasn't really working. Marvin Bagley, he wants to play. Uh, it was He wasn't very good at making those lineups. His all-bench lineups were atrocious, and it led to one of the biggest moments of the NBA season, that Pistons 27-game losing streak that uh, ended right before they tied the record uh, of 28 straight losses. Uh, they ended up beating the Raptors uh, for that, to, to stop that, you know, not great uh, history moment to be stuck with them. But that was one of the highlights of the NBA regular season for a lot of people watching those Pistons try and break their losing streak. And Monty Williams just crucially was not a good coach. And you can talk about how he wasn't given good players to build around, how he wasn't given chances to build this team, but he also proved on multiple occasions during this season 
that he was not the right guy to lead this team. He kept making decisions that clearly were the wrong ones for the team. His rotations were constantly awful. He would continue to have, you know, Cade Cunningham and his unit working and then sub all of them out and immediately give up a huge run to the other team, stopping any hope of winning those games, especially during that stretch. Now, he did get better after uh, management cut Killian Hayes, traded uh, a couple of the guys to the Wizards that he loved playing. Team got a little better when he was forced to deal with players that, you know, maybe he wasn't as enamored with, or I guess has saw the potential in or something like that. Uh, but there, this, this team was still really bad. And it's not just him. This is a really bad Pistons team. If you look at the last five years for the Detroit Pistons, they have a winning percentage of 245. They have a record of 94 and 290. That's a third worst in the last five seasons. The more confusing thing for me, rather than why they fired their coach, rather than why Monty Williams was fired, rather than if it was a good idea to fire him, because, yes, I think he wasn't working out in Detroit, and I think it was a good idea to fire Monty Williams. But the bigger problem is, and we've talked a little bit about this when we were talking about the Lakers job, right? The NBA draft is right around the corner. It's actually exactly one week from today. So they fire their coach one week before the NBA draft, and that is a huge dysfunction. Now, this this fire this firing came from uh, ownership, right? It didn't come from the general manager. It came from ownership. So ownership is making a decision here, and I agree with their decision. They have the number five pick in Wednesday's draft. So a week from now, they have the number five overall pick in a draft that while it's not stacked, it's not like, oh, this is going to be a generational draft class, you could still make a big swing, especially with a team as young as the Pistons and a team that, to be honest, showed a little bit of promise towards the end of the year. You know, you saw some of those rotations working. You saw the flashes from some of those young guys. It's a very, very young team. They're the third youngest team in the league right now, and adding another young piece of young talent, someone that, you know, can work well with Cade Cunningham, with Jaden Ivey, you know, with that group of young guys that they have continued to amass over these last five years of being this awful, awful franchise, uh, not winning basketball games. You know, this is this is when they can really capitalize. And I think it's kind of a head-scratching move to do this seven days before the draft, right? You had all, you had all postseason long to do this. I don't know what took them so long to decide to pull the trigger on the Monty Williams firing. A lot of the top targets for NBA head coaches are off the list, and even if they weren't, Going to Detroit isn't a super, you know, exciting prospect, right? And I know uh, they just signed uh, New Orleans Pelicans assistant Fred Vinson to be an assist permanent assistant head coach. So maybe he becomes the head coach. Assist maybe he, he was signed to be the per prominent assistant coach, but maybe he maybe he becomes a head coach here. We don't really know what's going to happen, and they're really throwing themselves really into the thick of it, when there's not a lot of times to do it. I just don't quite understand the timing of this move. I agree that Monty Williams should have been fired, and I agree that this was the right move, but I think that this move should have happened directly after the season ended, directly after Game 82, in the first round of the playoffs, along the same time that all these other coaches got fired, along the same time that the Wizards fired their coaches, or the Suns fired their coach, or the Lakers fired their coaches. They've, they, all of these teams have had weeks to find replacement coaches and prepare for the upcoming offseason, the draft, with their new coach, with their new coach's philosophy. And I, we've, again, I've harped on this a lot when we've talked about the Lakers, how it just doesn't, it's, it's kind of a little stressful if I'm the Lakers, if I'm the Cavs, if I'm now the Pistons, that doesn't have a head coach, doesn't have a guy that's leading that team philosophy on the court when you are making a draft pick. A draft pick is so important, and yes, you obviously, if you have a talent that is better than a system, it doesn't matter what that system is, but 
a lot of these guys, the Lakers, the Cavs, these are playoff teams. The, the Pistons might be able to get a guy that transcends a system, but still, you already kind of have guys like that in place, and you want to play around them. Whatever that style is, you want to make sure that it meshes with the coach's philosophy, that it meshes with the team philosophy, and not having a head coach there, not having a guy that's going to be in charge of what, of, of what you know, not not having a guy who's going to choose how this team outlook and how it how it plays moving forward in a decision as crucial as the draft and free agency beginning just a couple days after that the pistons need to hire a head coach fast and if i'm a team that doesn't have a head coach at the draft as we're seeing there's multiple teams in danger three teams right now don't have a head coach I, I don't know how that's going to go. I think there's a chance that even if it's a good draft pick, it could be disastrous. We hear about coaches, you know, you know, not agreeing with certain players and that not working out, especially in the NBA when players have so much power, especially uh, great players. You could draft a star and then not mess with mesh with the coach and that can throw team chemistry off of a cliff. It's just one of those things that's incredibly important to get right. And having a coach established there, especially in the pre-draft process before the draft, and while you are picking someone to be the face of your team in the Pistons case, you know, or a second star in the Pistons case, you know, it's super important to have a head coach for the draft. So this, more than anything, the timing of this is kind of confusing to me. Again, I think it was the right move to fire Monty Williams. They're going to be paying him $65 million more million, so he's fine. I'm sure he doesn't care that much. Obviously, it sucks to get fired two years in a row, but he's going to get $65 more dollars over $65 million more dollars, excuse me, over the next five years. So I don't think he's sweating too much about it. But anyway, I think this was a good move. I just think the timing of it was way too late. We are going to move out of the world of basketball and into the world of hockey for our next couple segments. The Edmonton Oilers continue to make this a series. They went 5-3 uh, against the Panthers on the road in Sunshine, Florida, Sunrise, Florida, forcing a Game 6 back in Edmonton on Friday. Uh, can they pull off the reverse sweep? First time since 1942 that that would have been done in the finals. First time since the 2010s that it's happened in the NHL. It's happened four times overall, only once in the finals. We'll talk a little bit about how we got here, what we can expect in the future, and Connor McDavid continuing to prove why he's the best player on planet Earth right now. So stick around for that. We will be right back here on Sports by GSMC Podcast Network. 